Hoping for a sincere performance But open to finding the moment To finding out where I'm headed now Looking for a sign of disaster So I can make it there faster Hi everybody! Welcome back to the channel. I am Randy. And I'm Diane, and this is Zephyr Travels. And in this week, we're bringing you part two of our guide to Zion National Park. In part one, we shared with you your first day at Zion, going to the visitor center and checking out some of the trails around that area and some of the easier trails to do, and also driving through the park, which is something we recommend that you try and go through from the south entrance to the east entrance and go through the tunnel. If you haven't seen part one of our guide to Zion National Park, make sure to watch it. We'll put a link to it up here somewhere, wherever that ends up, I don't know. And in this video, we wanna share with you some of the other hikes um, that are in the Zion uh, Canyon Scenic uh, Drive area. and some of these we most of these we've taken but there are a few that we didn't do and we'll just share our thoughts on them and and hopefully we get to come back ourselves one day and get to do those in the future so let's start with the grotto trail and so when you go into the zion canyon scenic drive if you're lucky like we were and you come during uh, December or January when you can actually drive in there you know you're gonna have to find a place to park and the parking is pretty limited so you may not park in near the trailhead that you want to go on right you want to try and get there early in the day then you might be fortunate enough and we were fortunate enough pretty pretty much to be able to find a parking spot. right right we found parking spots each day um, one day we actually were parked on the side of the road in a parking area uh, but there is a trail that goes between Zion Lodge and the Grotto. And both of those are trailhead areas um, for a number of trails. And the Grotto is a very popular trailhead area, so that parking around that trailhead is very limited. So you may end up parking in a different area and needing to use this uh, Grotto Trail, which basically just parallels the road for about a mile and connects to two areas. In our case, we got there and on our first visit, to hike that section, we got we ended up parking along the side of the road just a little north of the grotto, walked down the road, and then took this trail to the lodge area where we got the trailhead that we wanted to uh, explore. At the Zion Lodge, we got onto the Middle Emerald Pool Trail, and that takes you along a, a ledge that goes back into these this area where there's these three pools. And there's you can get to the lower Emerald Pool and the upper Lemon Pool, but the middle Emerald Pool Trail actually takes you right behind a nice waterfall. Mm -hmm. And there is some elevation. This is considered a moderate trail. Right. And if you're just doing this part of it, you would just go down and back. But for us, it actually connected to the Kayenta Trail. Um, and that we're kind of talk about both these together because that one actually takes you all the way back around to the grotto. And that's a little bit more of a strenuous trail because there's more elevation and climbing, right. climbing and there's a little bit more of a ledge to that when you're, right. when you're hiking that you way. You know, more rocks to climb on and it is a sandy, yeah, that one's sandy a sand trail. Right, where the middle Emerald Pool Trail is mostly paved uh -huh. and it can be icy because it's in the shadows of the uh, ledge. So you're not going to be in the sun for it. But you get a great trail on a hot day, I guess. Right. In right. our case, they were cooler days, so you wanted to make sure you were dressed warmly. But you could watch yourself because there could be ice on the trail, and there was a little bit we saw. Right. Look at the ice. Mm -hmm. From the middle Emerald Trail, it connects into the Kenyatta Trail, and the Kenyatta Trail follows or continues to follow along that ledge along the Virgin River and takes you over to the Grotto parking area. And that trail was a little bit more strenuous. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit rocky. There's a lot more elevation change, a little bit more climbing with it, but it wasn't extreme. No, no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't extreme. I mean, no, 
Yeah, I mean, we were able to do it comfortably. Right. <laughs> and yeah, so if we can do it, most of you can do it if, you know, if you're fairly, fairly mobile. Right. And being this time of the year, the park is not real crowded. So, you know, you can take your time. We have heard from other people that came at other times and it's very, very crowded. So for us, we picked a good time to come. We're on our way down. Good. We think we're at the end of our hike for today. It turned out to be a little more moderate than easy. At least one half of it. Yeah, we the first half we took was it deep was pretty flat and it was down by the water. And this is through the edge of the cliff and a lot of up and down, a lot of stairs. Yeah. But it's been spectacular views and well worth it. Yes, yes. So, like I said, I think we're almost to the bottom as we're on our way. We'll be finishing up and then go home and take a nap. Who's going to walk the dogs? I've already got well over 10,000 steps. Oh, well, maybe they can walk themselves. On our, on our last visit to the park, we decided to try something a little bit more challenging. And we went up the West Rim Trail, which takes you to Angel's Landing. Now this is a, a fairly aggressive and extra, well, not fairly aggressive. Uh, this is a fairly strenuous hike. Yes. And we did probably a mile and a half of it. Mm-hmm. And, and it's all up. up. It's it's all switchbacks, very steep elevation. It is. Um, it's not paved. It is paved. Yeah, it is paved, so that makes it a little bit easier. But, like we just said, it's all up the mountain. Right. And and it's fairly narrow. The trail is probably four feet wide in the narrowest sections. Um, and it's on the edge of a cliff. So, as you go up, you know, your, your drop-off is much right. more. If there was a couple places that were kind of sketchy yes. um, as if, you're walking along. If you're afraid of heights... Do not look over the edge. Right. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Just look out. Don't look right, down. <laughs> right. Just look out and yeah, don't look down because it may freak you out. Yeah. But it, the, the views are very good. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the views, views are, are good. are spectacular. Right. There are places along the trail where it gets a little wider, usually at the um, ends of the switchbacks. It gets a little bit wider. So you can stop and rest. It was probably the busiest trail we were on. There was a lot of people there. Again, we were there in January, so it wasn't super crowded. Right. It probably could be very, very crowded in a busier time of year. Right. right. This is not a trail that you want to bring your kids on. No. Um, I would not want to be a parent trying to manage a bunch of young kids on this trail. Be, you know, you'd be just worried constantly. Right. <laughs> All right, so we're starting out at the grotto. Here, and we're going to take this western trail along like this. Or not, this is Angel's Landing, like I was telling you. Oh, Very yeah. narrow, and we probably won't go that far. But we're going to take this place to Sweat Stream Trail and check that out. Ready? Really? Warning steep cliffs. Well, there's steep cliffs everywhere. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, we'll probably just take it up to about here. We won't take that part. 
I guess I will see. Yeah, some people have died doing Angel's Landing. Good thing. Nice little drop off here. <laughs> You're staying on that side, right? We said starting this hike that we'd only go to a point that we were comfortable with and we have hit that point up there a bit and so turn around coming back down we hiked for an hour and most of that hour was all uphill so this is a pretty strenuous hike got maybe to the halfway point halfway yeah. point of this hike and for me it was just too much so I told Randy he could you know go further but he said no we'll go as far as you go we're going this together so if that's as far as you want to go then I'm good with that yep um, it's a pretty strenuous hike I mean, yes. it is all uphill and yes. it's very steeply uphill. Yes. So even though it's all paved, um, it is pretty strenuous hiking. You know, we weren't the only ones that were stopping and resting along the way. Right. And, you know, we probably, maybe we didn't have a lot more to go and we probably got to some flat area where the hike would have been a little bit easier. But, you know, that was our point. We always, we said when we started out that we were going to go until we were comfortable and that was it. Yep. And that's what we did. Yep. But it was fun. It was a, it was a good hike. The views are great. Oh, the views. Unless you're afraid of heights. If you're afraid of heights, you don't want to go to the edge and look down. <laughs> you don't even want to go to the edge and sit down. No, you don't. No, you Cause, don't. Because there's a few spots where there's a little um, wall that you could sit at. But if you look over the edge of that wall, it's hundreds of feet down. Yes. So. Yes. So, just fair warning. And you do want to prep for this trail a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you want, as as always, you want to make sure you bring some water. You want to bring, you know, a change of clothing. Not change of clothing, but layers and right, clothing. Right, because the temperature will can vary. And if you're, you know, if you you get extremely warm, if it's a bright sunny day, and uh, if it's cooler, then you may want to put on a, you know, a jacket or even gloves, yep. a hat. Yep, and the way 
the uh, trails are kind of laid out in Zion, there are parts of the trails that will be shaded during the day. And if you're in the you know winter time, those parts of the trail could be pretty cool, where other parts of the trail could be very warm. And so you want to make sure that you have some layers to put on and take off as you do that. And you're going up in elevation, so as you get higher, most of the time it's going to get cooler. So you want to make sure that you have layers for that and be expecting that. The other thing that you want to prepare for is you want to make sure that you eat before you go on the trail. We didn't, we basically ran out of energy when we did the trail and, and that was after about a mile and a half of going up. I would have liked to have gone a little farther, but to be honest with you, it, it was pushing it for us. So you want to make sure that you have, that you've eaten before the you start the trail, that you have some energy, that you bring some things to eat while you're there. Salty snacks. Yep. Um, to help retain the water as you as you hike. Uh, you also want to be aware of how long this, this hike can be. We spent about probably two and a half hours on the mile and a half that we went because we went a mile and a half up and to come back down that. Mm -hmm. The whole trail is rated at, including Angel's Landing, four hours. Our calculation on time for these trails is those time bases are based on a 20 year old, a 20 to 30 year old in great shape. If you're us, you're going to want to add some more time to that. So right. this could be an all day um, hike for you, you know, and so you want to prepare for that. You want to make sure that you bring yourself plenty of food and water so that you can do this because there is. There's not a 7-Eleven or any place to stop along this trail. And there's not even a bathroom to stop at along no. this trail. So keep those things in mind when you do this. Um, we saw a lot of people doing this trail that were struggling at the same points we were. So we didn't feel bad that we didn't go much farther than we did. Right. We saw people that were younger than us stopping there. Um, and we've seen some people that you know were younger than us deciding to come back down about the same point we did. Mm-hmm. And I wore out before Randy did. He wanted to go further, but I was just exhausted. Yeah, there's there's a couple plateaus to this, um, and I wanted to at least try to get to the first one um, that would bring you up to the base of Walter's Wiggles, which is another very steep switchbacks. But, you know, we were close. I don't mm. think we had much more to go, but I was not going to push down in to do that section of the hike it, and, and to be honest it was i was getting tired too i would have pushed myself a little bit more but i knew diane didn't want to push that much more right but it's something we will come back and do again i think right right and maybe i have to do it by myself if i want to do the whole thing but we'll see also keep in mind that driving this section of the, of the park is only going to happen you're only going to be able to do that during the um, winter time the but otherwise this is a section that is closed and is only um, available through the shuttle system yeah. and it's probably something we should just talk about is a shuttle system of the park now we didn't experience it but if you're going to come to the park during march to october the shuttle system is in place and parking is very limited in the inside the park i think just around the visitor center is the only areas you're allowed to park and you know taking your vehicle and your rv into the campgrounds. And they can to the campgrounds right otherwise you will have to park in springdale and take a shuttle into the park or walk into the park or take a bike into the park um, bikes i'm understanding is, is probably a great way to visit the park you can cycle through the park there's trails paved trails that will get you off the main road and get you to the uh, Zion Canyon Scenic Drive, where you can then cycle along the road with the buses. Uh, it's it's probably a nice, a good way to visit if you're there during the more of the busier time of year. Right. If you do drive your vehicle into Springdale, be beware that you will have to pay for parking. We've seen it as maybe twenty dollars a day. Yes. I'm not sure. Are the shuttles free? I think the shuttles are free. You have to pay to get into the park. So you have to pay a, a visitor's fee unless you have a pass. Right. Um, you can walk into the park. They do have a walk entrance or a cycle entrance right into Springdale. You do have to pay to go that way too. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yep. Fortunately for us, 
we did have our bikes with us and there was nobody at stationed at that entrance right i think there was we were able to go in and out for free yeah. but that's probably not the norm, norm i'm yeah. sure during the summer or other busier times during the holidays there may be somebody stationed right there and you'd have to pay a fee right there are a few locations right in springdale where you can rent bicycles some places even have e-bikes that yep. you can rent and it's a nice bicycle ride that you can take through springdale and there's several restaurants there there's several souvenir spots and uh, yeah we actually thought that you know visiting springdale itself by bicycle is a great way to do it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we would recommend you know parking your car someplace if you bring up, brought your bikes use your bikes to get around springdale so we didn't stay in the national park campgrounds but we did ride our bikes through them mm -hmm. and, and toured them well, a little bit we rode our bike through one which is op open during right. the winter the right. other campground is not open during right the so winter. watchman's campground is open during is open year round and the south campground closes seasonally I think the South Campground is, um, I don't think it has electric. Yeah, it's more for those who like to boondock. Right. It didn't seem to have, it may have had a couple bathhouses, but that yeah. was about it. Yeah. The sites do have picnic tables. The Watchman's Campground does have electricity. We went through and rode through that. The sites are, I guess they're fairly good size, but there's, they're not, you, you're kind of packed in there a little bit. Right, um, right and we've talked to other people who've stayed there and, and when it's busy it's it feels crowded mm -hmm. when you're staying there it was fairly busy the day we rode our bikes through when you're camping there you may open your door and find a deer or many deers standing yeah. right there yeah we when we were riding through on our bikes we we had, were going down one section of the road and the deer just started walking across the road while we were riding through and we had to stop and there was what probably 10 of them and they were walking into the campsites just looking for some vegetation to eat all right all right yeah. and they they do they walk really slow they don't really pay too much attention if you you know you have to be careful because they do go up on the road and uh you know you want to be very cautious and watch out for them right we hope you enjoyed this overview of zion national park and our experience with several of the hiking trails if you did please give us a thumbs up leave a comment we'd love to hear from you love to hear your experience with zion if you've been there or if you're going and if you're new to our channel please subscribe to our channel hit the bell for notifications so you, you'll be notified when we post new videos we try to post new videos on a weekly basis and we'd love to have you follow along in our adventures so until the next adventure we will see you down the road all right take care everybody bye guys bye